Starter bases are important, so let's build a few. This first one is a great alternative to the 2x2, and might I dare say, better? I'll compare the prices after building it. With our footprint like this, we want to fully wall in the first three squares. When we get to this last one, we reverse the pattern and add a single door here and a frame to its left. Now when we add the doors, we have a basic airlock. This starter will have no roof access, so we can just fill in all of the openings above us. The TC should go down soon after, in this corner. Our first three sleeping bags can go in each of the thirds in this room. With no metal and three people, you could fit the four small boxes up against the back wall. Next thing I'd like to add is furnaces. In the beginning, you will need to start melting metal as soon as possible, so three is about where you want to be. Again, we can split the room into thirds with three more sleeping bags. This will total six at the moment. If your group size is less than six, you can skip some, or if it's larger than six, there are more to be added soon. With our most basic living goals accomplished, and after smelting enough metal, it is wise to replace these front doors with sheet metal ones. Wood gets weak very quickly. Once you have enough metal, the next couple of doors should go into these two slots. The first to section off the TC, and the second one to kind of cut the base in half. It's now four sheet doors to TC or a stone wall. The build cost of this is 2,036 wood, 6,210 stone, and 1,050 metal. In comparison, this 2x2 layout costs 1,900 wood, 5,445 stone, and 900 metal. The 2x2 is slightly cheaper, but is also smaller by one triangle, and has less room to build stuff in, since some of the squares are used as pathing. So where were we? Right. Once you have more metal, it's time to start adding in large boxes. The first ones will go into the TC room and it should look like this when it's finished. This will add 31 rows of storage and a barbecue to cook food. The next room we'll upgrade will be this one where we need to add a frame and a sheet metal door to the front. When it's finished, we lose one sleeping bag but gain one workbench. The missing sleeping bag plus two more can be added here along with our research table and two more boxes. The last room we can finish is this one. This will be the main loot room as it will be more protected when we add honeycomb in just a second. This room has 34 rows of storage, and the reason there are no barbecues is because this early in the wipe, we really want to conserve as much metal as we can. Now if you need more sleeping bags, you can fit two more right into the center floor here. This will give you seven sleeping bags in total. Now one thing I'd like to add here is one single garage door. We potentially have a lot of loot in these two rooms, so we should increase the cost of raiding through the doors. To finish the base, looking at the front here, from above we'll add in these following honeycombs. We'll start at the front door, we add a wall frame and a single door. A shop front for some extra vision goes here, and a door on the front. After the ceiling, we add this single door, which will give us an airlock at the very front of the base. If we come out the front door, and around the left side, we'll add triangles to all the following spots on the roof. Once we get to the end, we can come back the other way and add all the walls. The reason we don't honeycomb the rest of the squares is because it adds a bunch of stone cost, but doesn't really add anything to the raid cost. People will go through your doors on this base. This buildup should be made out of twig, not stone, but I have B grade on. But what I'm doing here is building up a spot so I can get on the roof real quick for these sheet metal upgrades. Now you can upgrade these from the inside if you would like to instead. Once you're here, the base is complete. This base in total costs 6,423 wood, 10,500 stone, and 2,900 metal frags, which includes all of the doors and the boxes too. It has 74 rows of storage and costs about 8 to 10 rockets to fully raid. This base has 7 plus sleeping bags and is best used by groups of 3 players and up. No starter base video would be complete without mentioning the 2x2. Two two. We'll first build the 4 square foundations. Now say you want the entrance on this side, then we can wall in all around it. We place a triangle here. Since I'd like to use double doors, we'll put two frames here. In the beginning, these will both most likely be wood. We can fill in all of the roof tiles, and then with your back towards the double door, we place the TC in this left corner. The next thing we should put down is our first four sleeping bags. It is always good to be able to respawn at home early in the wipe. 
If you center them between these two lines, you won't block placing stuff later. Since we won't have metal this early, we can use four small boxes for the initial storage. The first two can go right next to the TC here, and then the last two on the other side. To get metal as soon as possible, the next thing you want to add is furnaces. So starting on the left side here by the door, we'll put in three. Now we have all of the most basic stuff on the inside, and from the outside we have our classic 2x2 with a triangle airlock. This will cost you 3,388 wood and 4,125 stone. Once you have metal, the first two things you want to upgrade are the two front doors. Wood doors are just weak. Next we'll want to upgrade our storage with some large boxes. In this corner we can place four right next to each other. In front of those we can place three small boxes. You want them to all be as close to each other and as close to the large boxes as possible. If you do this right you will be able to add the doors to the loot rooms without having to pick them up. This next part is kind of optional. A repair bench can go up against this wall. You want it to be almost at the door frame, but not quite. We can place two small boxes under it just for some extra space. With more storage now, we can get rid of the first four boxes, which are also working as placeholders. On the right side of the TC, we'll now place our level one workbench. Now on the left side here, we'll want to place our research table. This can be kind of a pain to place, but we'll just give it the magical jiggle. A large box also fits under it. Now we want to grab two sheet metal single doors and a shop front. We'll come out the front and add these two triangles, a frame here, and the two door frames in the front. The first door should swing in, and the shop front here. After the roof, we'll place the second door swinging out to give us the front airlock. This should give you enough vision and space for the very early wipe. Our inside is growing nicely, but we need to start doing the basic upgrades. We'll sheet metal the roof so Raiders will have to use 8 rockets to break all the ceiling tiles. With the top being 8 rockets but the wall still being 4, we need to add honeycomb around the base. We'll add 2 triangles to each side on all of the sides. We can skip the side that has the entrance since the door path itself works as the honeycomb. Next we'll add the stone walls. Now you might be thinking, you can save all of this stone for your main base and simply upgrade the 2x2's walls to sheet metal. This works the same as far as raid cost, but saving all the cooked metal and the metal ore for your main base is in my opinion the way to go. Now this base is 8 rockets to raid from all directions, except going through the doors which is significantly cheaper, so let's finish the inside now. We'll want to add doors to the front of the loot room, but first we must finish the loot room itself. We can add a half height floor through the middle with 2 wall frames on the front. Next we can grab our first two large boxes for this right side. With the following two, you can just mirror what we just placed on the right side. For the last one, since I have OCD, I like to make sure it goes right in the middle. As good as I can get it anyway. Next we can place the doors. We'll use sheet metal doubles here, I mean you could use garage doors but it starts to get expensive. Remember I said earlier, if everything was placed right, you could still fit these doors in without having to pick anything up, which is good in case you need to replace them. In this little space here, what I'd like to do is add two small boxes, which adds just a little bit more storage but doesn't use any metal, which is the main point. Now I suggest two garage doors for this starter, which means you will need the BP, but if you only want to use one, it would be wise to put it on this frame here since it leads into the core. You can also fit two more sleeping bags right into here. I guess you could add these at any time though, and you probably will. That totals six sleeping bags, which is enough for most of the groups. For this final door, you will be able to build the frame, but not place the door. You will have to pick up these three sleeping bags, one furnace, and the research table and box. It doesn't matter which way it faces. When you go to place the stuff back down, doing the research table and box first makes the rest much easier to place. I don't know if you all have trouble with the hitbox of the research table, but for me it feels very clunky and I mean it's just easier to place first here. Next I like to put the furnace and the three sleeping bags.
Once you're here, the base is pretty much done. It costs 6,412 wood, 11,445 stone, and 2,950 metal frags, which includes all the boxes, doors, and furnaces. This base has 64 rows of storage with room for much, much more. It costs about 8 rockets to raid. This has 6 plus sleeping bags and is best used with 3 players and up. This base can be built by a solo or duo, but it's approaching main base costs and there are just pretty much better options out there. So as we approach the end of the video here, I want to ask, well, which one do you think is better? The first one is the one that I use. I believe it to be better in many ways, but let me know what you think. You can meet me in the Discord, link in the description below, or leave me feedback in the comments. So thank you very much for watching the video. See you in the next one.